So chapter 10, section three. Today we're gonna learn how to use chords. So the first one is a theorem. It's theorem 10.6. Again, you shouldn't be memorizing numbers. Um, if it has a name, it makes it nice and easy. This one is called the congruent corresponding chords theorem. And what this theorem states that in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if, this is important because it can go either way, their corresponding chords are congruent. So because of the if and only if, if they give you congruency marks on the chords like they did here, if they show you that AB is congruent to CD, then that tells you that the arc made by AB is congruent to the arc made by CD. So this would make these two arcs congruent. And we could go the other way. So let's say instead, like the statement here has, let's say they didn't have these red marks here, and let's say instead they told you that this arc was congruent to this arc, then you can conclude that these two chords are congruent. So you can go either way. So they'll only give you maybe one piece of information and then you can figure out that the other piece is also congruent because of the if and only if. The second slide, also another theorem. This one is called the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. So this one states that if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular, and we're gonna look for that right angle, to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So we can tell that this is a diameter, it's going through the center, and it's going from side to side. We can tell that it's perpendicular to this chord because of the right angle. So because it's perpendicular, I know that this segment here, FH, is congruent to segment HD. And I also know that arc FG is congruent to arc GD. So if EG is a diameter and it's perpendicular to the chord, because we see that right angle, then we know the pieces that the diameter splits that chord into are congruent, as well as the two arc measures. Now we're gonna see the converse of this. So the converse of the perpendicular chord bisector theorem, it states that if one chord is, perpen is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then that first chord is a diameter. So we can see that this chord is perpendicular to this chord. We can see that it's actually a perpendicular bisector because of the congruent pieces. And because we have a perpendicular bisector here, we can now can conclude that QS or SQ is a diameter. So it's the same thing, but in reverse. And then the last theorem, yes. And then the last one is called the equidistant chords theorem. And again, this one also has the words if and only if in it, so I can say it backwards and forwards. So in the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So either they're going to show us that the two chords are congruent if this little piece here, EG, is congruent to EF. So they would have some kind of congruency marks or they could have a statement like this. So if the chords are equidistant from the center, then we know that those two chords are also congruent. And you can go either way on that. Now we're gonna apply the theorems we just learned, plus our special right triangles and Pythagorean theorem. So let's try the on the next slide. Let me zoom in here to example A. Now the 13 is for this radius length. So it goes from the center to the side, 
So this 13 is a radius. I also can see I have another radius over here, which is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. This is also a radius because it's going from the center to a side. I also have one over here. So they've actually drawn in three different radii and they're all 13. The only one I need to focus on is this one for the triangle, the right triangle over here. And I'm gonna pull that out so I can see it a little bit better. Let me just pull it over here. So I know this is the right angle. I know this little piece is five. This one's 13 and I'm looking for X. So because it's a right triangle, to find the value of X, I can use Pythagorean theorem. So I can do X squared plus five squared equals 13 squared. It doesn't matter if you put the five first or the X first. I'm gonna square the five. I'm gonna square the 13. I'm gonna subtract the 25. And now I get 144. I'm going to square root it. Now, technically, we should be getting plus and minus 12. However, the X is a side length of a triangle. So I don't want to have any negative side length, so I'm only going to keep positive 12. So in this particular problem, we're only keeping the positive answer. So X equals 12. Now to find Y, I just learned a new theorem today, and that theorem was the perpendicular bisector theorem. And that theorem stated that if a diameter of a chord is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So because this chord here has been bisected, I know that Y also equals 12. So I'm using the perpendicular chord bisector theorem to figure out what Y is. You know, you could have even drawn in your own radii and made your own right triangle over here as well. But again, it's a lot easier to use that perpendicular bisector theorem or the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. Yes? How do you know when to like, do the plus and minus? Plus so whenever you get an answer, if you put it back into the original picture, um, if you were just solving for a side where it was just a variable and nothing to plug it into, like not a X or a X plus two, then if it makes it negative, you don't keep it in geometry. Okay, in algebra two, when we're not trying to figure out like a missing side or a missing angle, we keep both answers. But in this case, I don't wanna say that X is negative 12 because I can't have a negative side of a triangle. It always has to be a positive number. Okay, all right, let's take a look at B. For this one, Notice the 60 degrees up there. This is actually a special right triangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and redraw it over to the side just so we can see it a little bit better. So to answer this question, I'm gonna use my information that I learned in the previous chapter, my special right triangles. So over here is my right angle. This is my 60 degrees up here. And then I have 30. They told me this length over here is six. They have the X here and the Y here. Now, yes, yes. So now if you remember back from the previous chapter that the side across from 30, this is A. The side across from 60 is A square root three. And the side across from the 90 degrees is 2a. So to figure out what a is, which is really y, I need to solve 2a equals 6. So 2a equals 6, divide by 2, and a equals 3. So over here, my y equals 3. 
For x, I'm gonna take the three I just found, put it in there for the a, and then put square root three behind it. So x is three square root three, and y is three. Now, to find the measure, and this one, I know the initial instructions just said to find the values of x and y. Notice up here in white, it also wants me to find the measure of arc AB. So here's where I'm gonna use one of the new theorems I just learned. So remember, we just talked about the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. So, if I were to continue and draw another radius in this direction, it now becomes a diameter. And because this diameter is perpendicular to this chord, I know that this arc has been bisected. And I learned in 10.1 how to find, or 10.2, one of those lessons, that the measure of an arc is the same as the measure of the central angle. My central angle here is 60 degrees, so the measurement of this little arc here is 60, and since it's been bisected, this piece over here is also 60. So now to find the measure of the entire arc, AB, I could use my arc addition postulate and add 60 plus 60, so the measure of arc AB is 120 degrees. Is 16, so Y equals 16. And the theorem I'm using is the equidistant chords theorem. Okay, the next one, it wants me to find the measurement of arc CD in the diagram. So what I'm gonna use here, again, is the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. So if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and the arc. So I know that arc CD is equal to arc DE. So that's what I'm gonna set up. CD arc equal to DE arc. So 9x equals 80 minus x. Add x. 10x equals 80. Divide by 10. x equals 8. Now the question didn't say find x. It said find CD. So now I'm going to go back over here. CD equals 9x. So I'm going to take x, plug it in, and the measurement of CD is 72 degrees. Now let's change this up a little bit. What if I said find the measurement of arc BC? What could we do to find BC? Um, not 90, but... 72 from 180, good. Because remember, this is a semicircle arc, and if this is already 72, then what I can do here is do 180 minus 72 and get 108. Now, the reason why this arc, this one right here where the 9x is, the reason why this arc is not 90 is because that angle is not a central angle. It's not at the center. So this is why I would set them equal to each other to find the measurement. The only time that the arc measure is the same as the central angle is, is when it's a central angle, when it's at the center. All right, let's try one more example. And again, we're gonna use that equidistant chords theorem. So here, at the beginning, they're telling us that QR and ST both equal 16. It's also labeled in the picture. So because my two chords are congruent, 
then I know that those, because of the if and only if, I also know that the two, the two distances between the center and the chords are also congruent. So I'm gonna set 2x equal to 5x minus 9. Move the 5x. Divide by negative 3. And x equals positive 3. Now again, it did not ask me to find x. It asked me to find the length of cu. So cu equals 2x. I'm going to take 3, plug it in. And the length of cu is 6. So again, we applied the equidistant chords theorem. Because the chords were congruent, so, were, so was the distance between the center and the chords. They were also equidistant. And that is it for the 10.3 notes. Now, I haven't posted the homework yet. I'm going to do it now. I had to white out a few more problems. So you do have 10.3 homework. I'm going to do that right now and get that posted for you.